All right, guys, here is the fifth word. We have two more words after this to God be all the glory. The fifth word, guys, I'm not sure what I'm going to title this, but I would just give you guys the nugget that God, the nuggets that God gave me for this. Um, the first nugget is in your natural life. This is the one he downloaded to me this Thursday at 7.36 p.m. It's the first one is um in your natural life or in your natural world. You have to hold on to the word of God for dear life. And when he was downloading this to me, I was like going to sleep, resting. Well, my son kept running in and out the room, but I, I was like resting, going to sleep. And he knew he was going to have to go to sleep soon. He usually run in and out and then he'll come lay up with me. Or some nights I'm just like, Jay, come on, it's time for bed. Or sometimes he's already in the bed. But I had the door open and I kind of was just resting. And God started showing me this. He started showing me like driving in the Bible, in the words of the of the, the, the words of the Bible open, like the Bible open and the words was like life. So I was like, oh my God. So he was like, Rakira, write this down for the YouTube channel. This was Thursday night. So in your natural life or in your natural world, you have to hold on to the word of God for dear life. Whatever God give you, whatever the word is, that word from God is precious. That word from God is holy. That word of God will hold you if you are in agreement with God and receive it and hold on to it. I often tell you guys the word of God is what will do the word. The word of God, you know, will work. You know, a lot of times you holding on to the word of God is what will get you through. Your faith in God, your faith in that word ultimately is God. It's not just the word, but there is power in his word and God puts his word above his name. So you have to, in your in your in the spiritual realm, in your physical life, whatever your search circumstance situation is, even in your spiritual um, realm or world, you got to hold on to God's word for dear life. You know, um, I'm not condoning this, but I just saw this in the spiritual realm. If a person was hooked up in the um, like or in the ICU, um, ICU unit, it's so critical what they're connected to. It's so critical for prayers to go up on behalf of that person. It's so critical for them doctors and nurses to be on point about that person's situation. Because everybody in ICU is in there for different reasons. Everybody don't have the same trauma or the same experience. So those... Um, Lord, he just showed me a hospital. Those, um, like they vitals and the IVs and whatever they're hooked up to or whoever they connected with, you know, it's so critical because there are certain people that can come into an ICU room. Like I know where we are, um, kids can't go in there under a certain age because it's critical, you know, and it's, it's life or death in that ICU, you know. And we believe in God for life, but I'm just showing you guys what I'm saying in the spirit. So as it is like that, what I see you, you got to hold on and take God's words to your heart like a jewel. Like I told you guys before in prior videos, like a jewel. Like when God give me certain things, he said, right here, this is a jewel. You need to hold this in your heart. You need to hold this. And you know, if you, you know, in real life, you can't swallow a jewel. If you do, you're going to have to get some type of surgery or something. Because it doesn't belong there. But God was telling me to hold on to it and don't let go. Keep it in my heart. You know, that's what he's been giving me with his treasures over the years. So that's a word for someone in your natural life. Because the thing about the word of God, like I told you, once it's released, it's on you that hears it. It's on you what you're going to do with it. Because God's word has been released. So in your natural life, in your natural world, in your spiritual world, what is the words of God that you know you need to hang on to? I'm going to read these three scriptures and then we'll close. Isaiah, glory to God, Isaiah 55, 11, It says, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It, this is the Lord. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Isaiah 55 11. So it's my word. And we've read this scripture before in its full entirety. I encourage you guys, um, if you want to get in this full context, read things in their full context. Like I said, with these videos, I'm only releasing the scriptures that God gave me for y'all. So it's my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Numbers 23, 19. It's the next one. I'm going to go there now. Numbers 23, 19. 
God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I want to read it again. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? So the last one is Proverbs 35. It says, every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Guys, have a great day.